Hi, my name is Caru Alves de Souza. I'm the director of the film Meu Nome é Bagdá. Chegou, mano. Posso sorrir, não? Pô, tá parecendo um coringa, né? pô. Lógico que você pode, mas. <risos> A felicidade tá no ar, né, mano? Ah, mano. Ah, mano. Não, pá. Apaixonadinho, né, meu nego? Também, né, moleque? Mó gata daquela lá, né, Deco? Até eu que sou mais bobo. Mosca não, hein, Deco? Isso aqui, mano, seu parceiro aí, você que tá moscando, hein? É. Zoado, hein, gente? Você nem conhece a mina, a primeira coisa que você fala é que ela é mó gata. A mina deve fazer mil coisas da hora, deve... Mano, você nem tá ligado e a primeira coisa que você fala é que ela é mó gata. É só isso que você tem que falar? Tá com ciúme, Bagdá? Ciúmes, mano. Relaxa, Bagdá, relaxa. Isso foi só um elogio, mano. Que elogio, mano? Caralho, você fica tratando a mina igual um pedaço de carne, você acha que tá tudo bem? Oh, ah, não. Fica brava não, Bagdá. Você tá ligado que pra mim, você é minha musa encantadora, né? <risos> Hi, welcome to the 34th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and I'm here with director Karu Alvis de Sosa to discuss her movie Meu Nome e Bagdad. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. Hi, thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> yeah, we're glad to have you. How do you like the Berlinale so far? I'm liking it a lot. It's an amazing festival with a lot of cool movies and cool people to hang out. So it's amazing. And yeah. Berlin is an amazing city. <laughs> okay. I love the graffitis and everything. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, I, was, I was really impressed by the movie. Um, and there's sort of a lot of strong themes which are connected in a very, um, very fluent way, mm -hmm. I found. Um, and one of these strong themes for me was kind of a theme of, of um, solidarity among women. Mm -hmm. And um, because you have these scenes, you know, where it's at home with her sisters and her mm -hmm. mother, and then you have um, sort of the skate park and the, then the female skater group, which mm -hmm. comes in later on. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain maybe how you wanted to um, tell that, that sort of theme, mm -hmm. like how you approach that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like uh, uh, the most important theme of the film for me and personally I think it's like um, for women it's really important that we understand that together we are stronger. We have to, in, the world is so difficult for us and for a lot of people that if we don't uh, build this island mm -hmm. of affection, we are going to be really, really bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's true. And I think it's these, one of these islands of affection very much shows in, in one of the scenes that I had where, where I found it was very beautiful, um, where uh, Bagada and uh, Micheline and his sisters are sort of sitting together and telling that story, you know, with mm -hmm. the pasta, with that uh, sort of telling that story about the robots yeah. and he's attacking the house and, and everything. Yeah. And was there a special significance to that scene? Was there a special significance to storytelling as well? It's, it's actually, this scene shows that this family functions well, like they, like the mother, uh, tells, tells stories, the mother gives them rep repertoire to, 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 to their imagination. I think it's, uh, it's when we realize that this family, despite the, the, the difficulties, mm -hmm. uh, they, they function well. Yeah. They are happy together, they are healthy family. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think about that, that scene where it's sort of the last bit of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think Micheline tells it, and, and she's sort of um, telling her part. Mm -hmm. And then Bagda sort of mimics her movement, you know, mm -hmm. she's sort of like, like that. <laughs> Making fun of yeah. her mother, yeah, and exactly. it's okay. Yeah. And that, that seemed a little bit, um, a little bit improvised to me. Mm -hmm. was, there, was there a strong sort of sense of improvisation in the scenes? It was, was it? completely improvised, okay. this yeah. one. We didn't know, because the, the, we made this exercise on rehearsal. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why I thought it would be really amazing if we could do that on, on, on the film. Yeah. 
So it is, I, it's, and it is always an improvisation. Like okay. I begin a story and then I go past, and you have yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to pick the pick story yeah. from the end of mine. So yeah. it's really, it's, so it's, cool. it was completely improvised. I didn't know that Baghdad was going to invent like a, a, ro a robot skateboarder <laughs> and everything. Yeah. I just gave like a main topic for them to, do, like at the beginning. Yeah. I gave them the beginning and then everything else was okay. improvised. So. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I kind of um, found that as well, that that goes for many of the characters. I mean, there seems to be such a heartfelt connection between the actors, mm -hmm. as, almost as, as if they had grown up together. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you go about finding the people, finding the actors? Was it actually a group of people who ha had hung out together or was was it mm, sort of separate some some actors were already friends some weren't mm -hmm. uh, the the cast produ producer went to skate parks and found th those amazing people yeah. and for example for example grace the the Bagda and her friends they were already friends for life yeah. Okay. Like, they live together, <laughs> yeah. they travel together, they do everything together, so they are already friends. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, some characters were already friends, but the group weren't friends. But okay. now they are, like, best friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it kind of shows. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's the way the, the movie sort of works in that way, you know, that it brings these characters together and it seems so close, like, as if there's no sort of... Yeah, you know, no, no threshold between yeah. them in a way. Yeah, you know? and they became really friends uh, yeah. during the, the shooting. And in the re rehearsal, we, we worked a lot on this to, mm -hmm. to make them as a group, as a friend, as really real friends. Yeah. And yeah. they became, because skateboarders are like that sometimes. They, they hang out and they became friends yeah. instantly. Yeah. So. It's yeah, really cool. Yeah, it seems very fun and authentic mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. And they, they think uh, they have the same mm. feelings about the world, about they have the same ideas. So they so that's why they, they connected so so well yeah. also. It shows in one scene where one of them is talking about, you know, his worldview kind of, he's looking at a panorama of the city and saying, mm -hmm. okay, like, at the end, we're all the same, kind of everybody has the same sort of sorrows, everybody mm -hmm. worries about the same kind of thing, there's mm -hmm. not that many differences mm -hmm. about people, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And also there's, there's a lot of sort of, um, in other scenes, um, there seems to be some like society's expectation kind of creeping in. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you have like a you have like a fashion magazine, you know, ten ways to get a guy or something, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and 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 the girls kind of take it apart and do their own thing with it. You have that kind of fashion show, yeah. which they present in their clothing, and it's very playful. It's very colorful. Yeah. Um, what what was your your way of dealing with these issues to kind of take that society expectation mm -hmm. and turn it into something mm -hmm. else. Yeah, I think like the, the important thing that I, uh, that I try to work on the film is that those, those w women on the film, they are already cool. They are amazing women, yeah. but society keeps like pushing them, yeah. you know, and how they deal with that. They deal with solidarity, with comprehension, with like when when Gilda, the hairdresser, say to Bagida, you are already beautiful the way you are, it doesn't need to, to change anything. Yeah. So I think that's that's how I wanted to, to, to work with this team. Yeah. Like uh, societies sometimes even even when we, we, you you are strong, independent, cool women, women, mm -hmm. society keeps pushing you and like, oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> there's really no way to fulfill all these expectations. Yeah, and it's sort of um, as if somebody wanted to keep you small in a sense, right? I mean, yeah. It's, uh, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, it's like society is always saying how you how you how you, how you should move, how you, how you should uh, dress, and this is I'm sorry bullshit because you have to to dress the way you want, you have to to act the the way you want, yeah. the way you feel comfortable. Yeah, there's no patterns anymore. That's that's what this. These young people are telling us. I mean, I can hang out with men, I can hang out with, with women, I can dress green, I can dress yeah. black, I can do anything I want, as long as I don't hurt other people. Yeah, so all these expectations are sort of nonsensical in a way. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's true. I found that um, that is maybe shown the most in one scene most strongest when they are frisked by police and there's sort of um, there's issues of class and gender <coughs> in a film and uh, you know that that those differences between uh, kind of the, the skating group and then the, the sort of the government embodied by police mm -hmm. and there's a scene in the end where it kind of they talk about sort of structural um, differences. Mm -hmm. I think when there's this fight at the at the skate park, mm -hmm. and um, clever is confronted by uh, for his actions, and all the all the guys are kind of coming onto the scene and mm -hmm. sort of okay, I'm gonna beat you, mm -hmm. and one of the girls from the skating group says, yeah, okay, that's that's fine, but there's also something else here, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's, it's fine confronting a predator, mm -hmm. but it's also structural. It's it's all of you, sort of all of you, kind of go to this park and you take up so much space yeah. and, and, and we don't want to feel like that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you want to portray that? Like that is the sort of a structural um, um, difference and a structural sort of sexism as you will. In the movie. Yeah. Um, I think that is this, this drama involving Clever is, some, is, is like the, the perfect example because He's a cool guy, he's not a bad guy, he's not a villain or anything. But his behavior is like, it's not appropriate. Yeah. It's not appropriate. And, and the boys too, because in the beginning of the film, where, where Clever says, oh, like the, those kid, the, the, that cute girl, and Bagda confronts her, mm -hmm. everybody is like watching him. Yeah. Nobody, nobody said to him the, the way it's, it's wrong what you said. Yeah. It's just wrong, stop it. Yeah. So I think that's clever stories like uh, when, when the, the machismo and when these problems are, when we, we realize that it's, it's structural. Yeah. Because people are being, I don't know the word, con conniv conniving? They are conniving, yeah. 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 Um, I think also there's, especially in that scene where he says, okay, that girl is hot and, and um, Bagda is the only one taking offense. And at that scene, she kind of goes away. You mm -hmm. know, she's kind of taking her skateboard and going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, Clever is kind of going after her yeah. and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. And that is kind of taken up in the last scene mm -hmm. where he also says like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna, yeah, fuck you. Like, I, I don't care whether you're sorry, it's not okay. You yeah, know? Exactly. And there's also a difference because she doesn't go away. She wants to, but then the other skater girls kind of go, no, 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 we, we're gonna discuss that now. Yeah. So there's, there's very much a development in the characters. Exactly, well. exactly. Yeah. Because she began like, I, she, she began as a person who knows what's right and not what's wrong, but she can move from this, that awful situation. Yeah. So she, she hangs, like she gets separated for, from the boys, but she's still on the skate park. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, she realized that she doesn't need to, 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 to accept that anymore because yeah. she has her girlfriend now yeah. who thinks like her and who supports her yeah no, who, gi who uh, gave give her strength yeah. to deal with things that's the theme of solidarity that's why solidarity is so important yes and i think also that um the 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 skate group to her has a certain importance because 
I, I felt that what she wants to find there uh, at, at the skate park is that she's not being sexualized mm -hmm. in a way. Exactly. Because there's, there's these moments where, you know, they're frisked by the police. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it becomes an issue that she is being referred to a, a, as female, as apart from all the other mm -hmm. people, you know, she mm -hmm. doesn't want her name, Tatiana, mm -hmm. it was Tatiana, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. To, to be known, she wants to be called back there. Mm -hmm. And then there's other moments where uh, there's this party and her sister is coming along mm -hmm. and yeah, all of a sudden there's this perceived sexual tension mm -hmm. about all this, this group of people where she was very comfortable with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I kind of, maybe you could explain what it is to Bagda that she wants to find in that skate group. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the male or the female skate group or the group um, as, a, as a the, whole? The group as a whole, actually. As a whole. Yeah. I think uh, she's trying to, as all youth, she's trying to find who she is. She's trying to find what she's like, what she doesn't like. Mm -hmm. And I think that skateboard for Grace, the, the, the actress, and for Bagda too, I think Grace uh, brought a lot of Bagda's view to skateboarding. So what Grace told me uh, when I met her, that skateboard for her was a way to, to doesn't, uh, is, is, a, is a piece, is a resistance, it's kind of a resistance, uh, is a way for her to occupy the streets, is a way for her to, to say to the soci society, I won't do uh, what, what you are yeah. asking me to do. I will uh, skateboard, I will get hurt, I will occupy the streets. So I think this is what Bagda see. In, the, in this group of, of yeah. skateboarders. And I think the important thing of the character uh, uh, is that she doesn't want to, to people uh, defi define herself. Mm -hmm. uh, when she say, my name is Bagida, it's like, I, I, I'm not a Tian, I'm Bagida, I'm, I'm this person. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to, to put me in box, boxes, little boxes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. that's yeah, very true. Um, you, we kind of discussed this before, actually, but I, I still want to ask it um, uh, specifically after scenes which are very tough. Um, you have these these movements, you know, mm -hmm. these scenes which are sort of in between dancing and fighting. You have it after. Um, there is this altercation at the, the soccer playground mm -hmm. with these three guys. Mm -hmm. And then after the assault by Clever, mm -hmm. where you have that dancing scene. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain how you went about these scenes? With which importance did they have for you? And, and how you actually kind of made these movements? Uh -huh. Well, the first thing, uh, when, when this kind of uh, uh, thing, scenes uh, appears on my mind <laughs> when I was uh, writing, is, uh, is that I, I started to realize that in all movies, women suffer suffers a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody who puts a, uh, women uh, on screen, they are always suffering. I don't know, I had this... <laughs> So uh, I was watching a, uh, a lot of movies in a film festival and oh my gosh, everybody puts women suffering. And as I, my next movie, women are not gonna suffer. Yeah. They are going to be joyful, they are going to be strong, they are going to be friends and everything. But um, uh, in another way to, to build drama, you have to have some tensions and mm. society yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like a society, society, so it's not easy yeah. every day. So you have to, you don't, you don't build a, a movie, you don't make a movie without tension, without So, so in every, so I, uh, I decided that in every scene where Bagda suffers, suffers, 
uh, we have a relief moment. So the 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 dancing scenes was like that. It was uh, the the idea is that uh, when she can respond, fight back, she sings, she dances in in her mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's or it. or when she has a bad time, her sister, her baby sister, is like someone who gives her relief. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yes. Right after the scene at the party with Clever, yes, she kind of cuddles up in bed with her baby sister. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. It's a beautiful way to not uh, sort of victimize the characters, because. As you said, like there's a lot of suffering mm -hmm. uh, in other movies for female characters, and to just yeah. kind of go like, okay, there would be some sort of pain right here, but mm -hmm. let's transform that into something like, like a, almost like a celebration, sort of the, yeah. you know, like the sort of dance fight. Yeah, let's change the yeah. perspective. Let's not gonna resign ourselves. We're gonna fight back. That's the yeah. The, yeah. The, the the point for me. And could you explain, there's this quote at the beginning of the uh, sort of the, the fight dance scene at the soccer playground, which was um, uh, sadness would relinquish if only I was alive. A lion. A lion, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's that she, she, it's inspired by the Wizard of Oz. So okay. she, at that point, she felt she feels like the lion without courage. Oh, okay, yeah. So this, the fight, the the dance scene is where she finds yeah. her courage back. Okay. It's because when the there are two moments in the film where there are physical violence, and it's always when she can fight back because violence is. Yeah. It's difficult to fight back, yeah. and and the, the scene is to to like make her give her strength. Give in a her sense. strength. Yeah. yeah. And there's also these scenes which, to me, always kind of kind of looked very cool, very um, which almost had like a sort of music video feel to it, where you have these skater groups mm -hmm. kind of cruising down the streets mm -hmm. and it's in slow motion and there's this very, very beautiful soundtrack underneath it. Um, what was your decision to, to shoot it that way? Or what was your idea behind having these scenes mm -hmm. um, follow up sort of on the narrative? You mm -hmm. have some, some story elements and then you have these scenes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was inspired by uh, our, my conversation with the skateboarders because the film was built a lot uh, with them. Like uh, I always ask them, that ma that makes sense to you and everything because I didn't want to make a movie about skateboarders. I'm mm. not skateboarder, so <laughs> I have to build the film with them. Mm. Otherwise, it would be like a movie about skateboarded by a person who, are not a, yeah, who is not yeah. a skateboarder. So in my conversation with the cast about skateboarding, they said to me that when they are in the skateboarder, they are like, they forget about everything. It's like a lapse in, in time. Yeah. So I try to, to put that that feeling on the movie. Okay. So it's when everything stops and nothing matters and we are cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice, yeah. Okay, that makes sense to just kind of slow down time and just let the characters sort of be themselves. Yeah, exactly. Without any other sort of concern. Yeah. There's and and if you, if you uh, pay attention, everyone has a different uh, skateboarding style so it's so cool yeah okay i i would have to <laughs> okay yeah. i would have to watch it again yes yeah they Do have like uh, they move differently it's yeah. so cool yeah and there's all these different tricks that they try to learn at, at different points and it's just sort of, you know that that's kind of one trick uh, what's it called um Bone boneless. Boneless. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's frightening. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like boneless. It's okay. I'm not gonna learn say, that. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm too much full of bones to not have them broken <laughs> yeah. by, by this trick. That's what, <laughs> what I would think of it. Yeah. Um, there's also there's this sort of solidarity which develops um, in terms of, of queer characters, mm -hmm. you know, um, trans people. Mm -hmm. And you have that, um, that character which is apparently very sick and sort of mm -hmm. suggestive that, that he's, you know, getting treatments mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. um, what was your idea of including these characters? Mm -hmm. Did you want to make a statement as well about the, the queer community? Yeah, such? I think Bagda herself doesn't define her, its building her sexuality. So um, in the movie has like a, a possibility of her to 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 date uh, Vanessa. Mm. It's like they have a, an affection that yeah. is more more than than just can be more than just yeah. they can be more than just friends. And regarding the the transsexual and her friend character Emilio, mm. um, I thought that it would be important for Bagda that she has a uh, diverse uh, ambient. Mm -hmm. That's how she is Bagda, because she has all those people that are not uh, look alike yeah. uh, with her. Yeah. So I think they are there to, to like to, to, to show that the world is more diverse than... Yeah. than Exactly, to, to diversify, to show that it's not just a kind of straight line. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's why she's that way, yeah. otherwise she wouldn't. Would you, would you also say that maybe it has a sort of a queer look in that sense, that it's not just kind of straight, exactly. but it sort of goes... Yeah. Exactly, I think the movie is some, like, goes to, to this uh, yeah. path. I mean, society is better when society is diverse. We, we can't only have one point of view all the time. We can't only have one narrative all the time. Yeah. And, and people has to be people have to be um, aware of that. That yeah. society is diverse and movies are has to be diverse too. Yeah. Certainly. Has to have this diversity. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like. To show what is really going on. Yeah, yeah, because if you go on the street, there are diversity all the time, you, you see. And in the movies, there are not. So yeah. it's like... Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why am I sitting on a, on, a, on, a, on a chair to see one point of view all yeah. the time? Yeah, yeah. That it's not the, the experience I want to... Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Um, there's, there's points in the movie where actually that kind of reaction to to queerness is kind of shown mm -hmm. where uh, the, the shop is attacked but with eggs mm -hmm. um, where these uh, the soccer players mm -hmm. kind of like making you know mm -hmm. stupid jokes mm -hmm. and, and um, maybe you could tell us if, if that is sort of responsive to the situation in Brazil right now mm -hmm. or what, what, what the situation is right now actually? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is because we are what we are facing in Brazil and I think worldwide too is like this type of uh, manhood is, is like um, coming alive more, more than it is. Yeah. So this this kind of man that, that doesn't have uh, um, it's not ashamed of being homophobic, matches matches. Yeah. They in Brazil this kind of men are not ashamed anymore of being like that. Yeah. Of saying that you are a whore because you hang out with a lot of men. Yeah. Yeah. So. Some, uh, I was worried worried about that man uh, was too simplified, mm -hmm. like was too I don't know the, the word. Um, well, I was afraid 
that people per, uh, perceived these mm -hmm. these characters. Ah, okay, there's there's no way a man is like that. Yeah. But in Brazil, there's a lot of there examples. A, there, <laughs> our president mm -hmm. is like that. If if our president could uh, throw eggs in yeah. in in transsexual uh, women, they they yeah, he yeah, would. Yeah. So. So there's kind of a, a reaction to sort of like the the, the more conservative elements yeah. in society and at the government sort of saying, okay, that's our time now again, and it's coming back sort of, and you would have to fight it. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, yeah. there are men like that. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not a it's exaggeration. There yeah. are. Yeah. No, true. <laughs> And I think your your <coughs> film actually makes a very beautiful ca case against that. It's mm -hmm. a very it's a very strong statement. Yeah. I hope so because <laughs> I can't stand this type of thing anymore. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think that we are in a point uh, that we we just can't stand it anymore. Yeah. But they are coming alive. It's like conservative uh, people are. I don't know. They are stronger now, yeah. and it's it's just I don't know. It's for me. It's like why? Because we are stronger. So. Yeah, we should be. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for now. Okay. I was thanks. very happy to have this interview, and um, I wish you all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Thanks very much. Okay. <laughs>